Hello and welcome to part 6, the final episode of our wave game based series. In this episode we're going to go through the process of creating a spawner conditional. So this is when the spawner is on or off based upon a certain condition that you've set up in the game. Now it's important to note that this could be a, any condition that you may have related to your game's design. It could be a wave number they've reached, it could be a score they've reached, it could be a location, it could be anything you want at all. But the process we're going to go through here today is talk about how to filter that spawner list out per round. So let's go ahead and go through with it. For our final part of our game mode for wave games, we are going to make it so that your spawners can be set to be off or on and be, can be triggered on by any sort of event that you may want to happen. So for example, you may want some spawners not turned on until the player reaches a certain threshold or a certain wave number. Whatever it may be, that logic is up to you. So what we need to do is we need to go back to our spawners and add to our spawners a variable saying is on. And by default, we'll tick that to be true. We're then going to go and make that editable so we can change them in the world. I'm then going to go back to my game mode. And we've got the get spawners on begin play. I'm going to take it off begin play and change it and put it over on the new wave. So before we call start wave on here, we're going to call the um, move that across there and put it after the wave number has been changed and call the get spawners here. And what the spawners are going to do is it's going to go through all the spawners. And it's going to then check if they're on or not. If they're off, it's going to remove them from the array. So we need to do a for each. And put that in. And then the element here we can do is on. And let me get is on. And put it into a branch. And if that's false, we can take our spawners array and do remove item. And we're going to remove... The one that's in here so that should be on false there you go so if it's off it won't add it it'll remove it from the list either time so to test that out for example if i go to this spawner here and tell it to be not on uh where was i search for it is on oh did i not take it i don't uh is it oh i didn't compile it there we go and there you go. Now I can turn that one off. And I'll turn this one off as well. So now, only this one will be spawning enemies. Yeah, here they come from there. Okay, so it comes from this one. Now, Obviously, we want to trigger when these things can light up or turn on. And that is, again, totally up to you and your design. It may be for when the player achieves a certain score points or level or round number or, you know, whatever it may be. But whatever the event is, you just turn it on by that boolean. So let's say, for example, we want these to go on at round two, not straight away. So I can go into enemy spawner and make a variable in here for um, round activated. And make that a integer. Okay. And then on the event graph, we're going to, on the as first one game mode here. Um, oh, no. Yeah, just copy that and put that onto our begin play. So on begin play, we get game mode, cast the first person game mode. And then from here, we do bind event to um, end wave. And when the wave's ended, it's going to work out whether or not it should be turned on next. So on end wave. And from that, I can get the round I'm on. And I might be better off, well, definitely better off if I just promote that to a verbal. So I've got it there. Because now I can just grab hold of this and I can get the current wave number. Now, important to note, the end wave on the game mode is going to happen before I change the wave number. So end wave gets called here when I enter transition there. The new number doesn't come in until I go new wave. 
So what I need to do is on the spawner is take the wave number, add one to it. And if that number there is less than, or sorry, the same as or greater than my round activated. So if that is greater than equal to the round activated, I'm going to set it to is on. So if I go around activated, set default of that to zero and add that to instance editable, compile that, and then go back to our spawners here. And this one, I'm going to say is activated on round one, uh, sorry, round two, sorry. And this one will be activated on round three. So that's off, off two, and this one is on. So I hit play. I don't know why that's spawning over there. Why are you spawning over there? Let's work out why that's happening. So the reason why it's spawning there is because our for each loop here when we get the spawners. When you're doing a for each loop and you remove from the array that you're currently for reaching through, that's kind of bad because it's going to break the for each loop a little bit. So the element it was looking through is now different number in the list. So rather than removing from it, what we're going to do is we're going to promote it to a local variable. So promote to local variable and do local spawners. And plug that in like that. And after that, we're going to plug this into the for each loop rather than the spawners. So we plug the local into there. And then on the for each loop, it's going to go through and remove from the spawners. And that's only going to be affecting the local spawners. Uh, it's going to continue the same. The references are going to, not going to change at all. It's just the spawners list is going to change. So we compile that and save that. That should go through all of them now properly. So there you go. That one hasn't spawned any this time. It's only spawning from that corner there. If I go to the next round. Did one get past? There he is. And now we should see it open up on this other spawn as well. There you go. Now two of them are spawning. Now. There you go. And he keeps on going. So as you can see, you can choose how you want to activate your spawners it could be anything that sets them off um but yeah there you go and there you have it that is the end of our wave game based series it'd be interesting to see how you put in different enemies and design that set up there and, and lots of design elements go into a wave based series so um, i'm looking forward to see what people do with it so thank you so much to all the patrons members who uh, voted for this series to be made. If you'd like to get your vote cast in the next month's poll, you can head over to patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley, cast your vote there and get your videos made. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you subscribe and I'll see you all next time. Thanks everyone. Bye-bye.